Good evening. So today our group will present about the group project of our uh, uh, data visualization course, which is about the volume visualizations. So our topic is about surface rendering versus volume rendering. So this is our group member. The first one is uh, Lin Pao Jing, and then me, Lu Jia Jing, and the third one is uh, Hong Yifu. So now we will proceed with the introductions. So before we start, we will uh, explain about what is uh, visualizations. So visualization is the usage of computer supported interactive visual representations of data to amplify cognitions. And then next, we will explain about uh, volume visualizations. So volume visualization is a method of extracting meaningful information from volumetric data sets through the use of interactive graphics and imaging. And it's concerned with the representations, manipulations, and rendering of volumetric data sets. So the objective of volume visualization is to provide mechanisms for querying inside volumetric data sets and to enhance the visual understanding. So volume visualization uh, has been the most active sub area of research during the last 20 years in scientific visualizations. To be useful, volume visualization techniques must offer understandable data representations, quick data manipulations, and reasonably fast rendering. So there's a, a lot of application of volume visualizations in many fields. So the, for example, in medical imaging, uh, volume visualizations uh, is applied in uh, computer tomography, CT scan, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, and then ultrasonography. In biology, um, volume visualization also applied in focal microscopy. And then in geophysics, the, the example is uh, semi measurements from point and gas explorations. And then in industry, it's the finite elements models. And the last one is the molecular system. The example is about the electron density maps. So volume visualization is done in using two different approaches based on the portions of the volume master set which they render. So there's uh, two types. The first one is surface rendering, or we can call it indirect volume rendering. And then the second one is the volume rendering, or we can call it direct volume rendering. So this is the um, table, it's simple table about the volume visualizations uh, using two different approaches. So now I'll talk about surface rendering, which is, uh, we can call it indirect volume rendering. So surface rendering or um, indirect rendering of surface oriented algorithms are standard for nearly all 3D visualizations problems. So the basic principle of surface rendering is to segment and extract certain areas of interest from the volume and transform them into polygonal models. So surface oriented algorithm first fit geometry, geometric primitives to value in the, in the data and then render these primitives. So the data values are usually chosen from an ISO surface, which is the set of locations in the data where the scanner fields equals some value. So in typical data set from medical or scientific applications, the ISO surface forms a connected surface such as the air, skin, or brain, or bone boundary in a CT data set. So next I will pass uh, the, the explanation about the methods in surface rendering to my another teammate, which is uh, Lin Pao Jing. So now I'll proceed to the methods on surface rendering. This there is a lot of method. We only focus on two types of the, of the method. First one is surface tracking. Surface tracking is the surface reconstruction process that construct a geometric surface from a volumetric data set by following the phases of the walls residing on the surface boundary. The boundary is defined by a treasuring classification or surface detection process. Given the threshold value, a cross control is traced for each data slice, and then the control is in adjacent slice are connected and uh, translation usually triangles is performed. So this is the example of control data that are translated and which all of the data set is connected by triangle. Next, the second method is isosurfacing. It is a surface representation representing a constant value scalar function. It is an operation that given a same output a connected surface as a binary cell. The characteristic in included meaningful isovalues, interest interest in boundary regions, shedding give a 3D impression. The common isosurfacing algorithms are opaque cubes, matching cube, matching tetrahedra, and dividing cubes. So this is an example of isosurfacing. Next. Next is volume rendering, or we can call it direct volume rendering. Volume rendering is a process of displaying scala fields. It is a method for visualizing a 3D data set. The interior information about a data set is projected to a display screen using the volume rendering method. Along the ray path from each screen pixel, interior data values are examined and encoded for display. The volume rendering renders every voxels in the volume raster directly without conversion to geometric primitive, or first converting to a different domain and then rendering from that domain. 
they usually include an illumination model which supports semi transparent voxels. This allows rendering where every voxel in the volume is potentially visible. Each voxel contributes to the final 3D projection. Next. Next will be the methods of volume rendering. Also, here we only focus on two types of a method. First one is ray casting. It provides results of a very high quality, usually considered to be provide the best image quality. The value of each pixel in the image is determined by sending a ray through the pixel into the scene. So we can call it image order volume rendering. At each sampling location, a sample is interpolated or, re or reconstructed from the voxel grid. Popular filters are nearest neural box, 3D near, Gaussian, or cubic spine. So this is a volume ray tracing example. And we can see that from the image one, each of the ray is projected to the scene. And then through the normal or direction of the ray, we can know the value of each pixel. So we can know, after we know all the value of each pixel, we can know the volume value. Next. Next will be spreading. Spreading project exposures such as volume elements on the 2D viewing plane. It approximates this projection by those and space, which depends on the opacity and on the color of the voxels. A projection is made for every voxel, and the resulting sprites are composited on top of each other in back in front order to produce a final image. So this is an example of the spreading process in construction and resampling with the 2D filter kernel. Next. Next, I will pass to my team, Matt Ong Yifu, to explain about the comparison of surface rendering versus volume rendering. Okay, so now for the comparison of surface rendering and volume rendering. For the surface rendering, the 2D surface are rendered within the 3D space and objects appear to be solid. And for the volume rendering, the data consists of one or more supposedly continuous field in the 3D. The next is the data is being converted to geometrical primitive in surface rendering, which are then drawn. The conversion, conversion to geometrical primitive may lose or disguise some data. But for volume rendering, the entire volume can be rendered providing interior information. Data is seen more directly and less likely to be hidden. Next, for surface rendering, everything which is a 2D surface embedded in a 3D space. But for the volume rendering, the transfer function map the data into a volume of RGBA value. The volume is rendered directly using a variety of techniques. Next, for surface rendering, it is very good for objects with a solid surface. But for volume rendering, it will be good for objects with complex interior structure and no solid boundaries. For example implementation, one of the examples of these two imp techniques implemented using for CT scan. CT scan use this uh, use these two techniques. Inside the so what is a CT? Computer tomography is a medical machine that used to scan human body and display into an image. It is a medical imaging method that employs tomography where digital geometry processing is used to generate a three-dimensional image of the internal of the object from a large series of two-dimensional X-ray image taken around a single axis rotation. CT uses both surface rendering and volume rendering. And besides the image example of how it would look like. Next. Surface rendering. The way that surface rendering in CT scan is that it is set it set a threshold value of radio density which chosen by the operator, then using a edge detection image processing algorithm to detect the edge of the surface. After detecting and scanning a 3D image, the, the 3D image can then be constructed into an image. The multiman model can be constructed from various different thresholds, allowing different color to represent each anatomical component such as bone, muscle, and cartilage. And besides the figure 3D surface render of CT human head. Next. Okay, for volume rendering in CT scan, since the surface rendering are limited to only displaying the surface that meet with the threshold density, it will only display the image or surface that is the closest to the scanner or viewer, which is not actually very good because we cannot see uh, everything in an image. So for volume rendering, it allows the transparency and color to be used for a better representation of the volume shown using a single image. For the example, the bones of the pelvis can be displayed in semi-transparent so that even at some angle, the entire image is not blocked by the other bone and can see through. And besides the image that shows the example, since you can see right now the skin is actually a bit semi-transparent. And for some bones, the part you can actually also can see through. Next. Okay, so this is the reference that we refer to. This is some of the reference. Okay, and that's all for our presentation. And thank you very much.